Welcome back. Well, now that we've seen how to work with some very simple tab rotation as I have in this little slide tab system that we implemented, I'm now going to show you something that a lot of my students are often asking me about and that is how to replicate the overlay effect that you oftentimes would see with regards to a gallery or any kind of picture that you want to be working with so that you'd have a much more larger version of that picture available. And you'll notice that in the final files that I have available for you, you'll notice that on the home page we did implement this slide tab system here, but if you click on the link called overlay, you'll see that it's really just the same design as before. The only difference is I've placed three pictures right here. And these three pictures, when we roll over them, we click on them, they will open up a window that is perfectly centered in the middle of our screen and there's really not much going on here with regards to graphics as well all the shadow effects are being taken care of with CSS3 and you know the box is just you know a div a container of sorts the only graphics that are being used in here are obviously the picture graphic that I have here some text will accompany it and this small little X graphic which you can customize and make look however you would like it to look so when we click on that close it here's a second one and here's a third one so what I'm going to be talking to you about then is showing you how to work with all of these elements and how to apply the overlay tool from the jQuery tools library so what do we do? Well, if you head on over to the jQuery tools library and if you're looking at the demos or even if you're on the home page and you just click on overlay down here and you want to see what the overlay looks like, there's a lot of different types of overlays that you can be using for eye candy, for presentations, for interactions as it says here and you know very simple usage I'm gonna be talking to you about that and we're gonna be looking at the basic minimal setup because that's the one that's going to pretty much do what we want it to do and I'll be showing you how exactly to set that up so there are a number of graphics available if you did want to work with those graphics but as I mentioned to you earlier the only thing that we're gonna be really using is the little button that comes with it. Now I've provided you that button if you're following along with the downloaded files and one of the things that you'll see inside of the either progress or the finished file in images you'll also notice that there is a folder called overlay. Now I've included all the different files that you're going to be wanting to experiment with and you can take a look at them there's like you know gray backgrounds and red backgrounds and these will deal with any of the variations the apple effect is kind of a fun one and there's um, a lot of other things multiple overlays on the same page there's a lot of different demos that you can look at but I think just running you through the minimal setup will allow you to then further explore some of these more sophisticated methods but even so the minimal setups a pretty nice one and that's why we're gonna be looking at that so the only graphic I really need even though I've given you a bunch of graphics the only one I really need is the close graphic and that's the close button right here close PNG it's the one we're going to be using now if you wanted to change that just have to take note of the dimensions 36 by 36 and then just make whatever you want so it's really customizable there's a lot of different things that you can do with it alright so with that in place all we really need to do is to go back to our text editor whatever text editor you're working with and you'll notice here well, I've got two open I've got the finished file and this one is the progress file so if you look at the progress file if you open up the progress file you'll see that I have and just to let you know here in the finder you'll see the finished and here's the progress and in the progress we've been building up the index page so that it looks like it has the slide tabs the way I showed you how to implement them but now I've added an overlay file so let's open up this overlay HTML file from the progress and once you're in that area then we can now start to 
work on this particular file. Now you'll also notice that I've included on the index page a link to the overlay and as you'll see if we return to your text editor here's a link um, on the overlay page going back to the index so you can flip between them but on the index page itself I have a link to the overlay so at this point with overlay HTML open there's really not much going on inside here it's been stripped down and it doesn't have any of the graphics that we'll need but if you remember in the final version and here is the final version you'll notice that right in the article tab we have a simple lorem ipsum headline and then three images and then after that I just have the very same information that we had on the index page subheadline with some text and whatnot so if we return here you'll notice that I've left a blank space for you so that you can insert the information that we're gonna need to make this work alright so first and foremost let's address some of the HTML that we're gonna need to make this actually end up working so right after this little h2 lorem ipsum headline inside the article first thing I want to do is to add the simple graphics the simple thumbnail graphics that we're going to be using to click on to open up our overlay effect so we're going to call these triggers and I'm going to start just by applying a little HTML code here and I'll say trigger elements okay so in this area we are now going to create a simple div and this div is going to be given an ID and that ID is going to be called actually here I'm just going to come in here ID and we're gonna call this ID triggers pretty simple name to remember and works for us before we do anything else though I'm going to just come in here and close that div I don't want to get confused with which div belongs to which and which closing belongs to what so within these divs is where we're going to be placing our three images so let's just put in the first one and then we'll copy the next one so here is an IMG tag and the source for that IMG tag and I could use Dreamweaver to do this but here I'll just run it through you with you um, we're just gonna say source equals and we'll say remember this is the overlay and right next to the overlay see I didn't put the overlay inside of a folder or anything like that so right next to it is the images just as right next to it is the CSS so all we really need to do in this case is to write images forward slash remember all of the images that we're gonna be needing for the overlay is inside the images folder but I also have a folder called overlay and it's in here that we need these thumbnail pictures so we're gonna say images overlay and another forward slash and here my names of these images are frog thumb as in thumbnail one dot jpeg right now we don't necessarily even need to give it a width and a height uh, or anything like that but if you wanted to the width is set to 220 and then we could come in here and we could also say height and the height is also set to 220 but you'll notice a couple of things uh, I had to make some adjustments I think 210 would be actually more appropriate so that's something that we can consider as well now I'm gonna remove the width and the height because as you'll see you don't really need it in every case and in this case all I'm going to add is an attribute called rel and rel is sort of like a relationship between a certain image and something else but it's the rel attribute that we're going to be using to actually get the JavaScript to work for us so I'm going to give it a rel and in this case I'm just going to call it frog1 you can call it whatever you want change it do whatever you need now I'll just put in this information right there 
again, we don't need a self-containing uh, image the way we have here. So technically speaking, if we're writing in HTML5, I could just do it this way, and that should be fine. Now, if I were to just save this briefly and preview it in our browser, you'll see, oh, yeah, just simple image, and it's already 220 by 220, although I kind of fudged up on some of the on some of the sizes, although because it's perfectly the same width and height, if we make some adjustments, as long as the width and height are the same, we should be fine. So, as you can see, that's the first one. I'm going to ask you to copy this information, and we'll just paste it in here twice. All we really need to do is to change thumb 1 to thumb 2, thumb 3, and we'll change the relationship name from frog 1 to frog 2 and frog 3.